How do you decide what the best adventure bike is? You take the best versions of the most popular bikes and you ride them. Welcome to the first ever Adventure Bike of the Year test. 2019 was an awesome year for new bikes. This test is all about finding the best bike regardless of price, engine size, or all the gadgets that are on it. So our test had to start with last year's most popular bike, the Yamaha Tenere 700. Now the Tenere 700 doesn't come with a lot of options, there's a few bits and bobs, so we went straight out and chose the stock version. We followed that up with the KTM 790 Adventure R, probably our favorite bike from last year. At the end of 2019, Honda dropped on us a brand new version of the Africa Twin. It's faster, it's lighter, it's more off-road capable. And so for this test, we went with the most off-road capable version, the Africa Twin 1100 Standard. That version is the lightest version with the shortest screen and in theory, the best actual off-road style adventure bike. And lastly, we've got the BMW R1250GS. No adventure bike of the year test would be complete without the best selling bike in the market. We've opted for our favorite version of this bike. So we went for the R1250GS Rally. That's the version with the bench seat and the small windscreen and the off-road style foot pegs. And we fitted it with the sport suspension. So that's taller suspension, electronic, it's our favorite version. We think it's the best off-road and the most capable as an actual adventure bike. From there, we headed down to Portugal because the UK is kind of crappy in winter. It rains a lot. It makes it hard to film. And Southern Portugal is basically the California of Europe. We went there, we rode for five days, and this is what happened. Day one of Adventure Bike of the Year test. We are headed out on the road today to do the street slash touring test. So we're heading, we've basically got a 200 mile loop today. We're heading completely west all the way to the coast from Villamora. Um, we'll have lunch on the coast and then we will come back down the motorway. So when it comes to street riding, in fourth place was the Honda, the new Africa Twin. Just recently they announced that they'd completely redeveloped the bike. It was lighter, it had a stronger, bigger engine, it had a load of new tech introduced to it. And that was why we included it in the test in the first place. Now, when it came down to it on the street in terms of pure riding performance, the Honda came in fourth place and it came in fourth place but it was a really close run thing. The new bike is much better than the old bike, but where it still falls down is that it doesn't carry its weight particularly well and it's quite softly suspended. And those two things mean that when you start to push a little bit on the road, it ties itself in knots really quickly. difficulty I found with the Honda with the street riding uh, especially to begin with was I found the, the front wheel very vague uh, I found it difficult to put the front wheel exactly where I wanted it to and and then if I didn't quite get the front wheel on the line I wanted and I had to sort of change my line a little bit uh, the kind of softness of the suspension made it difficult for me to correct that problem on the flip side of the Honda not having the best peak performance it is a really nice street bike. It's vastly improved over the old version. The handling characteristics in general are really nice. It rolls into corners. It does medium to fast riding really nicely. That's definitely where it's most comfortable. There's a couple of little bits about it that I think Honda definitely still need to improve. It took a little while to work out a setting where the throttle was smooth for me. Uh, there's a, there are a lot of settings on the Honda, which is a great thing, but it definitely takes a little while to work out a setting that you're happy with, I suppose. Third place in the street riding category is the Tenere 700. This was a really close run thing between the Tenere, the KTM and the Honda. And it comes down to the Tenere lacking a tiny bit in a few areas. 
in general, the Tenere is an awesome bike on the road. It's super fun to ride. It always puts a smile on your face. It's a really, really enjoyable bike because it's nimble, it's effortless, it's comfortable. The engine is really, really lively, especially for a small engine. I think it's, it's full of life and it's a, just generally a really good bike. There's a couple of little bits that let it down. The first one is the, the, the front brake for me is actually a little bit weak on the road and it really shows in comparison to the BMW and the KTM where the brakes are stronger. The suspension's a tiny bit soft, so when you start to really push on the road and go kind of over its limit, it just gets a bit wallowy. And it, it, it's impressive that it doesn't tie itself in knots too much, but the suspension in that kind of more comfortable guise, if you're looking for a bike to, to really ride fast on the road, it has a slightly lower limit than, than the other two bikes that beat it. However, as an adventure bike to ride on the road and even just have as your daily road bike or the bike that you ride on weekends, it is fantastic. It is phenomenal and Yamaha have done a brilliant job. Second on street riding category was the KTM 790 Adventure. And I think the reason that it, it got to this point uh, and it finished second here is because the maximum level of performance on that bike is phenomenal. If you, if you really enjoy riding fast and you wanna push hard all the time on the road, the speed that you can ride that bike and the way it's designed, the weight, the chassis, the composure of the suspension and the phenomenal engine all make it a fantastic street bike. If you want to attack and you want to ride fast, it's got the biggest performance envelope. You can, I, I feel I could definitely go faster on the road on that than anything else. It's just not relaxed. And, and that's the thing I guess I'm not happy with. Maybe my age, I don't know, but I don't want to, I'm not buying a sports bike, I'm buying an adventure bike. But if you're buying, you know, an adventure bike because you want to ride fast all the time and you enjoy that sort of always being committed, it, I, then I'd say it's the best on the street, you know, it's the sharpest, but you have to ride it like that to enjoy it. As soon as you're not riding it like that, it, it's kind of a little bit clunky. The winner in the street riding category is 100% the GS. It wasn't unanimous, but in everybody scoring, the GS ends up first or second. And that's because it's so good at all forms of street riding. It's a really good handling bike. It's comfortable. The engine is fantastic. And the refinement of the GS is kind of what helps it stand above. As soon as I get on it, it's fun, it's easy, you can make mistakes on it, and as soon as you make a mistake, it, it kind of doesn't matter. GS turns around and says to you, ah, silly boy, I'm gonna go around the corner anyway. And it's got that same feeling that if you wanna go fast, engine's incredible, engine's so strong everywhere, from the bottom right through to the top, just, it's such a broad spread of power, and that puts a massive grin on my face, and it's playful, yeah, there's sort of the same reasons I love the Yamaha is it's just as soon as I'm on that GS, I'm having fun, you know, whether I'm cruising and looking at the scenery or whether I'm attacking the road. Welcome to day two of our awards and today is our off-road day. So we are we are primarily going out to ride more off-road today. We're gonna to find some big hills, we're gonna find some difficult stuff, ride some single track, and kind of put these bikes into places that are just generally a bit more technical and see how they handle it. fourth place in the off-road riding category 
is Honda's new Africa Twin 1100. The new Africa Twin is without a doubt a better bike than the outgoing model. The two areas that Honda really focused on were making it lighter and making the engine better and they both show. It's definitely lighter to ride and the engine is a jump forwards. It's much nicer when you're riding technical off-road. It's easier to put the power to the ground and be gentle with it and kind of get it through technical scenarios. There's two areas that the other bikes in this category stood above the Honda. And the first one is how they carry their weight. The weight on the Honda sits quite high up and the suspension of the Honda is very, very plush. That plushness means that the balance point changes a lot when you move the bike around and it can really wallow about. And because it's wallowing, it's not precise and that makes it feel quite big. The second area where the Honda could probably do with a little bit of a tweak is in the riding position. The riding position is very upright, which means it's comfortable on big straight gravel roads. But when the riding gets more dynamic and you're accelerating a little bit and braking a little bit, being so upright makes it hard work really quickly. If you've got a steep hill to go up, you end up holding on on the Honda in a way you just don't on the other bikes. And the same with downhills. When the riding gets more technical, that wallowy suspension means it's quite hard to put on a really precise line compared to the other bikes in this group. And those little bits are what's holding it back. Second in our scoring was a joint tie between the Yamaha and the BMW. Yamaha and BMW have both got two incredibly good off-road adventure bikes here. And it seems counterintuitive because the BMW weighs nearly 250 kilos and the Tenere weighs about 200 flat. One of them shouldn't work and Yamaha shouldn't have been able to produce a bike that good for so little money. But both of them excel because they're very easy to ride. They're very composed and gentle and still really fun as a result. I think all of us got on those two bikes and immediately felt comfortable. I think with the, the GS, the power is so gentle and such a wide spread of power and the bike's so balanced and planted. It's very stable. Uh, the brakes are unbelievable. For the, the physical size of it, it rides off-road way better than it deserves to ride off-road. Confidence to ride off-road. And that big, soft engine can pull away in almost any gear with the throttle almost closed. And even though it's a big, heavy bike, the weight being down nice and low, makes you feel the bike's a lot lighter than what it actually is. The sport suspension on the GS that we've got on, on this one is, I think, unreasonably good for a bike with two swing arms. It shouldn't work, it, it really shouldn't, but you can hit things and you can ride hard and it, it's super comfortable. It's, it's just happy with it all the time. It kind of deals with what you throw at it. The Yamaha sort of makes you comfortable for different reasons, it makes you comfortable because, again, the engine's super gentle, super smooth, very easy to manage, uh, and it feels the lightest uh, of them all. For me, an adventure bike is about really enjoying the ride, not having to race at everything. So Yamaha was very, very good at that. It felt like a, a big trail bike, a big adventure bike should feel to me. Really relaxing to ride, and if you wanted to get a bit of a move on, it was, it was good enough to get a bit of a move on, certainly at the pace I was happy to ride trails at. Off-road riding, absolutely the best bike in terms of performance is the KTM 790. KTM have done something really special with this bike. The peak performance level of the 790, the speed with which you can carry into things and the composure that bike retains when it's doing that is on a different planet. KTM never gets out of line. It never feels wild. It never does anything you don't want to do. It's beyond my capabilities of pushing it. I come from a motocross background and it just tracked perfectly. The brakes are unreal. The suspension is unreal. Power in rally mode when you're going fast down the, the tracks and that, it was just, it's just an awesome bike. The only downside with the KTM is that when you start to ride more technical riding, while the chassis still feels good, I think the engine lets it down a tiny bit. It's a little bit difficult to find grip on. It's a little bit difficult to feel what the throttle's doing and be gentle with the ground. And that's something the other bikes in this test have definitely got over it. For the, the reasons I enjoyed riding the arm, the KTM is at the opposite end. On an adventure bike, I want to feel that I can have a relaxing ride if I want to. You could potentially ride the KTM relaxing, but it wasn't happy doing that. It wanted to be red and it wanted to be ridden.
Day three, today is all about figuring out which of these bikes is the best value. In the value category, the Honda kind of ends up in fourth place by default. These three bikes are probably the best three adventure bikes that exist right now. And the Honda is only just a tiny bit behind it. The downside that the Honda's got is that it's just not quite as refined as the other bikes. The electronics package isn't quite as good. The ABS doesn't work quite as well. The traction control doesn't work quite as well as the KTM and the BMW. It needs a little bit more work on the user interface with the electronics. It is complicated, it takes learning, it's not intuitive. Oh, no. Why can't I turn it off? I think if you bought a Honda and you're intending to use it as an adventure bike, you're gonna end up spending a little bit of money as well. It needs a bit more belly pan protection. It probably needs some crash bars. It definitely needs some hand guards. The standard ones aren't great. And all of that kind of adds up to it not being quite as good value as the other bikes. The second place on this list was definitely contentious and it's ended up with a tie between the KTM and the BMW. KTM makes itself good value by having such a high performance level and also by not needing much to use it as a genuine adventure bike. The way KTM have designed the fuel tank, the sump guard and the hand guards it comes with, it doesn't really feel like you need to spend any more money to take that bike and ride it off-road and never be worried about damaging it. The GS is fantastic value because it's so refined. The details of the GS are much better than every other bike. Everything you touch on it is fantastically well done. The controls, the electronics, the brakes, the fueling, the engine, the comfort, the wind protect, everything is top notch. And when you ride that bike after riding any of the others, you immediately recognize just how good that stuff is. And BMW really kind of showing that they're a premium brand. You pay a lot of money for that bike, but what you get is the best of the best with every component on it. I think we've all disagreed on different parts of what we consider makes a bike good value, but without doubt, every single one of us put the Yamaha as first because the price point is outrageous. To get that bike for 8,600 pounds in the UK, is really, really impressive. You know, there, there's a few bits you can look at and maybe want to improve if you bought that bike, but I think for 80 to 85% of people, they could jump on that bike and ride around the world and be happy as hell with it for the rest of their days. And likewise, if you rode it on the road, you'd still be really happy. Every single time I got on the Yamaha, I had a smile on my face straight away. I didn't expect the suspension or the brakes or the engine, the whole package to feel as good as what it does at that, at that price. So that brings us to our last category and the overall title of Adventure Bike of the Year. The way we did this was we added up all the scores from every category in an Olympic style scoring and then the one with the smallest score at the end is the bike that won. In fourth place, you'll find the Honda. Unfortunately for Honda, as good as this new bike is, everybody else has kind of kept stepping their game up and the Honda isn't quite as good in any category. It was always kind of third or fourth in our tests and that doesn't make it a bad bike. It's a fantastic bike. It's really enjoyable to ride. It can do everything that the other bikes can do. It just doesn't do it quite as well. 
Between third and fourth place in this test was a really, really closely run thing. And in third place is the KTM 790. The KTM 790 is a fantastic bike if you, if you love to push the envelope. Its street performance level is really high. Its off-road riding performance is really high. But there's a couple of things that knock it down. It didn't do quite as well when you started to put some miles in. And the, the other caveat for it is that if you aren't into pushing hard at some point during your riding, or you're not super experienced off-road or on-road, I don't think it's a great bike. I think it's a little bit too stiffly sprung for the general population. But if you are a person that loves to do that stuff with your bike, you are gonna absolutely wet yourself every time you ride your 790. Second place in our Adventure Bike of the Year category is the Tenere 700. Yamaha have done a fantastic job with this bike. Even if this bike cost 1,500 quid more, I don't think any of us would have a problem with that. It, it's just a brilliant bike. It's super fun to ride. Like every one of us felt like we could jump on tomorrow and ride halfway across Europe. And if it was the bike you had to ride on weekends, I think you'd be happy every day of the week. GS is our adventure bike of the year. It is a very complete bike. It's also the most expensive in this test, but for us, the idea was that we were gonna pick the best bikes we could find on the market for adventure bike riding. And the GS does absolutely everything, either first or second in class. The biggest surprise of the GS on a whole is how well it carries its weight. It shouldn't carry it that well. A 250 kilo bike shouldn't ride off-road or on-road anywhere near as well as it does, but it does. And that combined with its refinement level and its enjoyment and its ability to do really good stood up third gear wheelies, make it a fantastic bike. Thanks for watching this video. We have had an absolutely amazing time filming this and uh, testing these bikes down in Portugal. And it wouldn't have been possible without our fantastic supporters. First on that list is Revit. We've been wearing their kit for the whole of this trip and it's been brilliant. It's worked absolute wonders. So if you're interested in buying some new kit, check out the link down below in the description. Second on our list of supporters is the Dom Pedro Hotels in Southern Portugal. They have helped us out as well massively and given us a place to store our bikes and they've been really, really friendly to us as motorcycle riders and it's really, really helpful. And third on our list of supporters is Brittany Ferries. They are a really, really great way to get yourself out of the UK in winter time, to get away from the cold weather and ride in the sun and generally just have a great time. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and remember, life's better when you're riding. Finger guns are dreadful. Finger guns. I hate the finger guns. Good one, Lil.